Hi, it's Alistair at Electric Scotland. Uh, this is me doing my introduction to my weekly newsletter for February the 1st, 2019. Um, okay, so sorry I missed it last week. I had some problems with my camera. I've actually got a new one coming later on today. Uh, I checked the tracking and it says out for delivery, but the post woman hasn't arrived yet and it's quarter to two. So, hopefully she'll arrive soon. Okay, so, <clears throat> um, what I've done is I, I've, I've given you a, a story that actually was in last week's newsletter, but I wanted to emphasize it, so I've kept it in this, this current issue. It's to get justice to Scotland, you must be rich or popular. Is the title it basically says I've been reading a few, um, I've been learning a few hard lessons about the accountability of government in all its forms to citizens without personal riches who are not able to resort to crowdfunding appeals. It's literally a horror story, and I'd really like you to read that because. Frankly, I think it's a massive indictment to our social services and a, national, uh, I mean, a national disgrace for our legal system. It's terrible. Um, it came from the Scottish Review and to my knowledge, these kind of stories, I've only ever read them in the Scottish Review and I thank the Scottish Review for taking the trouble to research it and publish it because all the other newspapers are a total waste of time when it comes to this type of issue. And it's horrible. I mean, read it for yourself. It's just horrible. And if you're a parent in Scotland, by golly, I'd be very worried, very worried indeed. So, you know, I wanted just to highlight that to you. Okay. So on for everything else. Not a great deal this week. I mean, obviously the Brexit stuff keeps going. So I do have a story. It says, on Brexit, Auntie just can't help herself. It says, it's heart and soul. The BBC is against Brexit and all its works. And, and you know, anyone watching the BBC knows they're totally biased. They hate Brexit. They don't want it to happen. And frankly, I think that's just terrible. It's meant to be a neutral, uh, and it's just full of lies. I mean, the fear stories coming out of the BBC are ridiculous. They need to be held to account. And frankly, I don't think if you get public funding anymore, I think we need to do something about the BBC, and I don't know why nothing's been done about them, but they're definitely totally biased. So if you're reading or listening or watching news on the BBC, ignore the Brexit stories because it's bias, total bias. Okay, next story. Robert Burns, man of independent mind. This is by Professor Chris um, Whitley, who reflects on the poetic legacy of Robert Burns. And of course, we just had the burn suppers. I thought maybe a couple of wee burn stories might be useful this week. Next story I'll go is the Franco-German dreams of European integration are on the rocks. It says France and Germany try to go it alone, and smaller EU states fear a stitch up. I mean, I'm bringing these stories because you know, if you want to remain in the EU, you have to be aware of what the EU is doing. Do you really want to be in the EU when this kind of thing is going on? I don't know. Next story, Robert Burns, an immortal memory, said, um, this is from Kevin Haig, who does all the finance stuff. He says, it was my privilege to deliver the immortal memory at the Gifford Village Burn Supper on Saturday, and some people enjoyed it enough, uh, or were at least polite enough, to ask me to share a written version, so here goes. And actually, it is very good. And you might look at the comments as well, because I, I managed to get our own Robert Burns lives in as a comment, which is nice. Then Brexit, SNP, and Indy. Membership of the EU forms one of the core pillars 
of the SNP's vision of independence. That's some sceptical Scott. Then a UK-US free trade deal could boost national output by 80 billion and cut UK prices by 8%. The key promise of Brexit is free trade with the world, while we continue to trade freely via a trade agreement with the EU. Up Helia, uh, walkings hit the streets. The annual Up Helia uh, uh, Fire Festival has been gearing up on the streets of Lerwick in Shetland Islands. Uh, if you haven't heard of it, it's a great event. A lot of people travel there specifically every year to attend it. So you might like to read it. There's quite a good uh, video uh, from the BBC on that as well. Then after uh, Aachen, France, Germany and European security. It says, without British support, any European attempt to forge military capabilities is likely to fail. This is a story from CapEx. And then finally, because there are a lot of stories this week, uh, Foreign Secretary warns political correctness is harming the fight against Christian persecution. Since Jeremy Hunt has argued that people are hesitant to speak out about the persecution of Christians for fear of being linked to misguided imperialism. Mr. Hunt said 80% of global religious persecution is against Christians. I'm delighted he's bringing this to the fore. It's been a, it's been a case for me when I was with the Knights Templars to highlight the, the problems that Christians were having around the world. India and China are both very concerning areas as well as the Middle East. Okay, so that's the news for you. Uh, Electric Canadian, uh, I've uh, continued with some of the regular reports, uh, Canadian Archive reports, I've added the 1893 report, uh, Canadian Annual Review of Public Affairs, uh, I've got up the issue for 1916. Uh, Canadian Fishermen have added Volume 8 and the Canadian Horticulturalist have added Volume 11 which was 1888. I may add the Canadian Horticulturalist they're doing a, a fabulous colour picture or colour drawing basically of some of the flowers and vegetables and stuff and they're really excellent. In fact, you might even want to copy them and make a collection of them. Okay so ethnic histories uh, as you know, Canada is a very multicultural country, and I thought to myself I'd better add a page for the English in Canada, because we've got a whole ton of information about the Scots, so, and we've got information about the Irish, and I thought the English really need a page as well, so I've done that. And on that page, by the way, there's another link I'm providing, which is Settling the West, Immigration to the Prairies, from 1867 to 1914. Uh, it's a very good article, very good article there. Um, but as I say, there's also a book about an English minister. Um, yes, English in Canada. Yeah, on that link, at the bottom of the, the page, you'll find a book uh, about this English minister who's coming to look at Canada and he gives you his impressions of it and certainly he's gobsmacked about the size of the place and everything but he also thinks that the uh, opportunities are amazing so an interesting read there uh, Canadian Life and Resources is another monthly um, uh, magazine I found so I've given you a copy of that to read uh, essentially volume 2 in particular is kind of interesting but um, anyway, I, I think I'm giving you maybe uh, a few issues to, to read of that one. And I've got the Annals of Canada. This is a, um, compiled by Lieutenant Colonel William White, who was a Deputy Postmaster General of Canada in 1875. Um, so that's actually quite interesting. And also, I got the second report of the Bureau of Archives for the province of Ontario, 
Ontario, as you maybe know, is the largest of the provinces in Canada. It's got, I think, 12 million or something like that people, whereas the next one is Quebec with eight. So uh, it's always interesting to, to read these uh, reports. Okay, now on to Electric Scotland. We've got Best Newfangled Family Tree. We've got the issue one of the February 2019 edition. Need to read. Uh, the History of the Blue Bot Blanket or Craftsman's Banner by Alexander Pennycook. It was produced in 1756, so a really old document. And I will say it's a very poor scan. <clears throat> but I think it's just about readable and uh, you might well be interested in that. I had a, a really good go and frankly I was quite fascinated with it. So that's on balance why I decided to put it up. Um, the Days of the Fathers in Rothshire. It's by the Reverend John Kennedy of Dingwall. It's a second edition produced in 1861. But obviously, it's, it's, it's another good read. Uh, Journal of the Honourable John Erskine of Carnock. This is 1583 to 1687. Um, it's from the original manuscript with an introduction and notes by the Reverend Walter MacLeod. And it was published in 1893. But the thing is, it's really... Um, an autobiography from the point of view it's his journal and the guys edited it and translated it and done some good work so it's quite fascinating because he does go into a lot of detail about the social life and stuff like that so yeah it's a good read that then I have extracts from the diary of Robert Burry uh, who is the Burgess of Edinburgh um, it's containing diverse passages of state and other memoranda uh, memorable accidents. It's from the 1532 year of her redemption till the beginning of the year 1605. It's in, um, it's not quite Scots, but it's, it's certainly readable, but it's, it's a wee bit challenging. But it's, the thing is, it's fascinating considering the date of it. Then I've got Memoirs of the Life of Sir John Clark of Pennycook. He's the baronet baron of the Exchequer and it's extracted by himself from his own journals from 1576 to 1755. Um, so it's edited from the manuscript in Pennycook House with an introduction and notes by John M. Gray, who's an FSA Scot in 1892. Again, when you look at these old uh, manuscripts, usually you get a feeling of what the social life was like in Scotland back in the day, so that's why I kind of like reading these ones. Then the final story I've got for you is uh, Rose, Rose Neath, Past and Present. It's by William Charles uh, Morn, uh, published in 1893. Again, it's another place in Scotland I haven't covered. Uh, although we do have um, uh, another book which includes some information on Roseneath, but this is specific about Roseneath, so where it was mentioned, I've added uh, this whole book uh, to that, that page. So I hope you enjoy that. And then the story this week is an old Scot society. It's actually in uh, Boston in the USA, and it's quite an early day. It said, there exists in Boston, U.S., a Scottish society, a short account of which may be interesting. I shall preface uh, what I am going to tell about by referring to an event which led to a considerable number of our countrymen finding a home in New England. And that was due to the Battle of Dunbar back in 1650, when something like, I don't know, there's a whole pile of Scots were captured at that event and they were the ones that were sent to colonies in America and everything. So it's quite a wee bit challenging because some of the text, the, the spelling's quite difficult. So in this particular case, at the top of that, where I just start the story, 
I have given you a link to a specific PDF of that article and you might actually find it's easier to read it than, than the because I have while I've OCR'd it in it's um, it's quite a job translating and, and making sure all the spellings are correct because the spellings are very different back in those days you know so but anyway there you go that's what I've got for you this week so hope you enjoy it okay it's been freezing here in Canada minus 30 35 degrees wind chills making it even colder but I have to say I've had to put my gloves on for the first time since I've come to Canada I've always had a pair of gloves but I've never felt I really needed them but by golly this week it's been freezing and my fingers were getting kind of almost frostbit so I found my gloves put them on it's made a huge difference so anyway there we go hope you enjoy it and as always please send me any comments or thoughts on what you've heard and hope you enjoy it all okay thanks have a good weekend when it comes <laughs>